You're watching KUAM News Extra with Sonia Arkin. Welcome back. It's not only a local law, but a federal mandate that hasn't been complied with in more than a decade. We're talking about the revision of child support guidelines that's supposed to take place every four years. While efforts were made two years ago to establish a commission to review and update Guam's child support guidelines, that commission reportedly failed to meet even once. But during her first 30 days in office, Alicia Limtiaco changed all that by holding her first commission meeting. And for this, this segment of the show, show we've asked will ask her the significance of such a move what is the significance of that move uh, Sonia, with our ch child support enforcement, um, it is a, definitely a significant uh, move forward. Um, we have a situation in our child support enforcement division where we are dealing with uh, many, many families and many, many children. Um, I always stress that uh, it is so important that we do everything possible uh, to, again, uh, have a strong enforcement of the guidelines uh, to make sure that we are meeting the needs of the families. Uh, we are talking about a situation where we have children and custodial parents who need these um, funds uh, just for their day-to-day -day survival, you know, buying clothes, buying food, uh, buying supplies for school, going to school, and, and also it's that critical. Um, when we uh, had the first meeting, uh, we, uh, everyone that, that came to it, all of the different representatives that were uh, appointed by this particular law, uh, came together and came up with uh, a multitude of ideas and issues that we knew we needed to address right away. Um, we're talking, as you said, about guidelines that uh, uh, that have to be updated. Uh, I believe, if I recall correctly, that the current guidelines in effect are our 1996 guidelines. And um, we need to make sure that we, we make the modifications necessary. Um, it can address uh, all kinds of issues uh, that pertain perhaps to the calculation of how much a, uh, a custodial parent may receive on behalf of his or her children uh, that are in need of support. Uh, it may encompass uh, and some issues regarding visitation and, and again, uh, how much credit perhaps a, a custodial or non-custodial parent, parent may receive. You um, name it. It had to be done because yes. it hadn't been done in 10 That's years right. and kudos to That's you and your right. efforts. Um, Sparking, speaking about kudos to you and your efforts, your first literal week in office was like a whirlwind. You were right. off the island and you were straight to the Supreme Court right. talking about the bond borrowing case. Where are we at with that right now? Um, Sonia, at this point, uh, the decision from the U.S. Supreme Court is still pending. Um, we've indicated uh, previously that, uh, and we're hoping that we get a decision from the U.S. Supreme Court uh, no later than June, uh, which is uh, approximately the time period when the uh, U.S. Supreme Court goes into recess and, and starts taking a look at some other new petitions for writ of certiorari that have been filed. There are new cases. Uh, and so um, if we're able to get a decision before June, that would be even better. But uh, at this point, it was... Uh, as you said, it was very important, a very important issue. In addition to being important, yes. it was a dream come true for most attorneys. Mm -hmm. Tell us what that experience was like for you. Yes, um, it's not often that uh, an attorney has the opportunity to appear before the U.S. Supreme Court or to sit at, at council table. Yeah. Um, of course, we had the uh, Washington, D.C. firm that had been retained previously argue the case. Uh, uh, but, yeah, it, uh, it was uh, uh, definitely uh, something that um, I, professionally speaking, as an attorney, uh, sincerely appreciate. Um, it was uh, good to see uh, the sort of dialogue between the, um, the counsels arguing and the justices, and just by listening to their questions, you could see um, that they had a sincere interest in Guam and that they knew what the case uh, and the issues were about. And um, that always, um, as, as an attorney, uh, of course makes you feel good because you, you uh, see that um, uh, they're well prepared, they have very good questions, and I believe not even two minutes into, into both counsel's mm -hmm. argument, oral argument, uh, they immediately started asking questions. And so very thoughtful analysis of the legal issues. And just goes to show they all have a concerted um, concern for the case at hand, and yes. no matter how small Guam is. That's so right, know. absolutely. Now, you recently attended a seminar, the National Association of Attorneys General's Child Support Seminar. Tell us about that experience and what you brought back to Guam for us. Okay. 
Uh, the uh, National Attorneys General uh, Child Support Seminar, which was also held in Washington, D.C., uh, was uh, co-sponsored uh, by our Federal uh, Office of Child Support Enforcement, uh, which is the office that also oversees Guam. Um, there we discussed uh, uh, technological approaches to uh, high volume caseloads dealing with child support. So we're looking at uh, ways in which technology will help the offices enforce their child support guidelines and, and move forward um, our cases. We also discussed uh, uh, issues involving uh, legal issues that have been dealt with among the different jurisdictions. Uh, for example, uh, what happens when you have a non-custodial parent who is in another jurisdiction and of course has not paid child support and depending on the circumstances, uh, how far or how much or how effective can the uh, jurisdiction where the custodial parent is uh, reach to get jurisdiction over that non-custodial parent. Uh, that was one legal issue. Uh, uh, several. Several, yeah. They're yeah. just an, a, a multitude of uh, issues that were discussed at that conference. And I'm glad we're discussing them only because Love Your Children was the child support platform that Moylan pushed for his whole four years. One would wonder, because this commission you know, nothing, no one paid attention to this commission or, or reviving it, if you will. You know, what happened to all that child support money that was supposedly being poured into child support? Is that something that you're investigating? Um, at this point, Sonia, um, the office is reviewing the uh, expenditures uh, for our, of course, child support. Um, as well as other federal grant issues. Uh, that's part of the process. Um, we want to, as, as, uh, as members of our community have repeatedly expressed, uh, move towards, of course, accountability and transparency, and, and that's part of the process. And so um, we are wanting, of course, to make improvements in um, any expenditures that we make across the board. It's very important that we account for the monies. So obviously, our government of Guam has very limited resources. We're very fortunate. Uh, to have the opportunity to be um, uh, working with our federal government agencies and being provided with federal federal government uh, funds uh, to support our services, and I'm so we want you to make sure we use the money. the federal right. funds, yeah, because yes. we want to ensure we use those right. And will you reveal whatever your findings are to the public so that we ensure? That, that we feel good about it being used properly. Uh, I, Sonia, as, uh, certainly as part of the accountability and transparency process, um, we will abide by the guidelines or requirements of our federal grants that call for uh, disclosure. That, fair enough. We appreciate it. Stay tuned to KOM News Extra as we discuss the latest challenge to the COLA settlement and what, if any, the AG's office will do as a result. Stay with us. Did you know iConnect prepaid has the most affordable peak hour cellular rate at 20 cents a minute? Did you know during nights and weekends, iConnect's nationwide calls to the U.S., Hawaii, and Alaska cost only 5 cents a minute? Did you know with iConnect prepaid, you get unlimited push to talk in all four islands for just a dollar a day? Get iConnect now, the biggest push to talk network at 888-8888. Push to talk that works. Introducing the all-new Bigger RAV4. With an EPA estimated 30 miles per gallon, it can handle anything, no matter what gas prices might do. 